Hello, my name is Martina Laird, and I am going to be reading Queenie by Candace Carty Williams. Why was that your fault? I pushed him away. I didn't know why I felt so bad. I didn't know how to tell him how I felt. And by the time I knew what was wrong, it was too late. I said, I had a miscarriage, and yeah, even though I didn't want a baby, I still lost one. So maybe that doesn't count in my theme of loss, I tried to joke. And my friends, I think they're just bored of my problems. It's not the same with them. I seem to piss them all off or just burden them. And one of my best friends, Cassandra, she's moved to the countryside with her boyfriend, some guy that I slept with without knowing. Sorry, this probably all sounds really silly, doesn't it? Like playground drama. I tried to wrap it up and not yet understanding the limits of what you should say to a therapist and what you should write in your dear diary. Queenie, none of this is silly at all, Janet said, smiling. She was plump and small and had a kind face puckered with dimples and her slightly tanned skin had, was dotted with tiny moles. She spoke softly and chuckled often, her voice deep and precise with a lilt that told me that she was from up north but had been living in London for a while. Her short hair curled around her face, auburn mainly but grey at the temples. I started off calling her Dr. Cosima, as the letter had said, but she asked me not to, telling me that she didn't want me to feel as though I was being examined. Janet continued. Try to remember that we all encounter many issues, big and small, and that they're all relative to us. They impact us all in different ways. There's nothing too trivial. It also sounds like you're dealing with quite big losses in a concentrated period of time. Could you tell me a little bit about how those things have made you feel? I don't know. I feel like I can't breathe a lot of the time. Sorry, I don't know how best to say these things, like I should know technical terms or something. It isn't for you to know technical terms, that's my job. Just try to relax and tell me in your own time how you feel. Even if it's physical pain, discomfort, if it's tiredness, sadness, anything at all. Okay. Well, yeah, I feel tired a lot. Like, exhausted. I feel like I'm always trying to concentrate on being normal again. And I don't really sleep that well. I feel worried, like something really bad is about to happen, but I can't pinpoint what. And then I feel even more worried because I can't work out why I feel the way I do. I feel frightened, like properly scared, especially at night. I have these nightmares, this sleep paralysis. I end up physically fighting everyone I share a bed with in my sleep, which is not cool. I stopped to catch up with myself. I feel nervous about really small things that I used to be able to do without even thinking about them, like going to the shop or eating, and I used to really like eating. I don't feel sick, but my stomach is always flipping over and over, and when I get really upset, sometimes it feels like my stomach is like closed off, so I don't have an appetite, is what I'm trying to say. Sometimes I feel frantic and I feel like everything has just spun out of control out of my hands I don't know like I feel a bit like for a while I've been carrying 10 balls of wool and one ball fell so I dropped another to catch it but still didn't catch it then two more started to unravel and in trying to save those I lost another one do you know what I mean sorry don't apologize Queenie I understand what you mean. You use a term that I don't like to be used here. Oh, sorry. What was it? You're apologizing again, Janet laughed. Normal. What is normal to you? Oh, 
sorry, sorry for apologizing. You know what I mean. I shook my head quickly as if to reset myself. Well, you know, normal is normal. Like being happy and being able to get up and go to work without worrying about everything and being able to have a nice time with your friends without thinking something bad was going to happen and being able to eat without feeling shit. You know, just normal. I think that we all need to scrap this idea that normality is something to strive towards. I personally cannot pinpoint or prescribe what it is to be normal, Janet explained. I think it's a lot of pressure to put on yourself. Maybe, I tried to concede. Try to bear that in mind as we go along, she said. I'd like to ask you something, Queenie. Go for it, I said, trying to make myself comfortable. What do you think about yourself? I froze. I hadn't realized the question would be such a hard one to even approach answering. That I'm insane, mainly. I quickly threw an answer at her before I could start getting in my head about it. Janet chuckled. Well, you aren't insane. I can tell you that now. I mean, what do you see when you look in the mirror? When you think about yourself as a person? I try not to look in the mirror. I don't know. I'm just me, I guess. Nothing special. I'm not pretty. I'm not ugly. I just get on with it. I don't know. I looked at the frosted window again. This is a hard question. Janet nodded slowly. I noticed that you haven't mentioned your parents at all. Do you have a good relationship with your mother and father? That question was even worse. What was she going to ask next? Ha! <laughs> a bitter laugh burst out of me. No, <laughs> my dad isn't here. He's in Jamaica, I think. Nobody really knows where he is or what he's up to. I shrugged. And my mum... I cleared my throat, feeling something familiar rise from my stomach. I don't... Is it okay if I don't talk about her? Janet pushed a glass of water towards me. I think that it would be good if we could touch on your mum at some point, if that's okay. We don't have to do it today. When I walked out of the door, after doing some breathing exercises to stop me from panicking that only served to make me feel stupid, I decided firmly that I wasn't going to go back.